I'm Margaret. I work here across the road at Stanford Law School and across the campus even further at the Design School. I'm lucky enough to have um, two feet on this wonderful campus. So I wanted to give you a peek about what we're doing here to experiment and try to build a new era of more accessible, more engaging, and more user-friendly legal services. So if my clicker works... Uh, yes, it does. So I'm going to use this word design a lot. Um, I know often when we talk about innovation, we tend to go straight for technology. And I'm here to say, no, we need to think about design. Because design really starts with the user, with the people at the center. So not building tech for tech's sake, but really starting from who we're building for, whether it's other professionals, whether it's lay people, and coming to them where they are, presenting them to inform with information in ways that they can actually understand it, where they want to engage with it, where we can even make legal services fun, attractive, open people's pockets, but also get them in the door and get them to actually engage with legal services. So when I use the word design, it's not about just what PowerPoint theme I use or how we decorate the room. It's really an ethos. It's a way of looking at problems, saying, how can I make my solution more usable, more user-friendly, and more intuitive, more engaging? That's the metric. And when we look at how currently legal services are provided, do we measure up on any of these metrics? I say no. I, I say we need to be challenging ourselves and figuring out ways to push ourselves to communicate better, to deliver services in more centralized and easy-to-use manners, and to actually on-ramp people into legal services in a much better way. So I don't, just like we're saying, don't go out and learn how to code, I'm also saying don't go out and go to design school, but there is this world of design thinking that's really rose, risen up in the past 15 years, and it's taken over medicine, it's taken over management, and it needs to take over law. And it's using the methods and the processes of professional designers, of innovators, and bringing it into other professions. So this world of design thinking is one that has a lot to offer everyone in this room, everyone interested in making legal services better. And that's what I'm experimenting here at Stanford about. So using this kind of design process, and not to be too much like a recipe, but um, really if you look at these core steps of what it means to take a design approach to problem solving, it's about experimenting quickly. It's about starting with the user at the beginning and not about our de definition of the problem. So first it's about doing a lot of user research about how people frame the problem themselves. And then after getting that problem statement from the people themselves, then building and testing quickly. So trying out lots of new solutions before you invest a lot of money or time in them, um, and then iterating upon um, those test findings, getting data, and then making choices based on that. And the goal here is to fail early and fail often, but fail quickly so that you haven't invested a lot of time and money in your new idea before it falls flat on its face. <laughs> Um, so how do we bring this into the world of law? And like I said before, law and tech, we know that there's a lot to be added from technology when it comes to efficiency and, and improving our power as lawyers. But when we bring design into the equation, we can really make things that people want and um, really uh, deliver the services in a much better way. So here are four areas where I think design has a lot to offer law. I think the most obvious one on that far left is really how we can communicate better. So how we lay out our PowerPoint slides, how we make websites that look better, how we make forms that are easier to fill out. So kind of communication design. In the middle, in those two sections, it's products and services. So what are those new kinds of apps, those new websites, those new kiosks, those new actual products that people will interact with that give them value and they want to use, they can use? How do we build services that are easy to flow through, that have touch points that are intuitive, that are not confusing where you're having to um, navigate a very um, labyrinthian path? And then finally, how do we change our organizations to be better designed so that good ideas can bubble up, so that innovators are cultivated? All these things we've been talking about for the past few days. So let me give you a peek of this approach in action, what I've been lucky enough to work on here at Stanford. So I've been launching, I've been experimenting and prototyping with what an R&D lab would look like at a university, and this is what I've come up with, legal design initiative. Again, it lives half at the law school and half at the design school. Come visit my website and see all my projects in detail. But let me give you a, a quick um, 
insight into a few of the, the areas I've been focused on. So I started off doing a lot of hackathons, design sprints, just kind of putting it out there. Who wants to come and work on legal problems? Not just lawyers, not just JDs, but are you a computer scientist? Are you a sociologist, a policy major, a designer? I just had these open doors, lots of food, and um, a great place called Stanford to attract people in. So we did all kinds of exploratory events, from how do we make it easier for an F1 student to get um, um, an H-1B visa, to how do we help Fidelity Investments communicate its terms of service on a very small screens device in a really easy to use and clickable way. So that's great. It helped me build a community of developers and designers and people outside the law school who actually do want to solve really complex problems and start to get some mojo going about what good new um, models are to be pursuing. The other thing I've been doing is just blogging a whole heck of a lot and just putting everything I can online because I realize there are a lot of people out there on the internet seeking good models of legal services, but there's not coordinated places where we have all the information about what's going on across the country or across the world. So I've just started kind of Pinterest boards for good ideas of legal services and um, come explore them, open law lab, um, visual law library. I started off as a cartoonist in law school. That's kind of, so I put all my drawings there, come see legal drawings. Um, what I really love to do is teach and to kind of train people in this. So I've been running workshops for everyone from courts and legal aid groups to law firms and then students here at Stanford. So I'm in the middle of a nine-week class right now. I have 20 wonderful students who are all partnered with everyone from Oric Law Firm to the Eviction Defense Collaborative. And those partners have all brought really juicy, wicked problems that they are dealing with on the ground. And my students have had the luxury to figure out what actually is the problem statement there, talk to the users, talk to the service providers, and now they're starting to actually propose these new solutions that should be piloted. They're not actually going to code them up, but they're going to build the strategies, the pilot plans, and the concept designs. And I think this is a really exciting place for law schools to be working, is to start pushing more innovation, because we're a third-party neutral actor with lots of bright young lawyers, but JDs don't usually have these opportunities to actually work with the organizations on the ground to start imagining these new models. Um, I've been doing a lot of user research myself about how people use the internet for legal help. I don't have time enough to go into it today, but you can see on my website about how people are actually um, finding legal help or not online. It's a really, it's a, it's a tough area, as LegalZoom can attest to. And the final thing I'm doing is actually building. So I've been able to put together some small, agile teams of designers and developers. So we're building two main products right now. We're building a court coach kind of app, where first of all, we just remind you when your court date is, what the actual room is, how to get there, just really basic. So we're working with Santa Clara County Court on that. And then the second project is uh, training pro bono attorneys how to represent immigrant kids kids um, to get special immigrant juvenile status. So we built a wonderful, really interactive flowchart that you can get triage in a very visual, non-text way. Um, and the other project is kind of a smart checklist to navigate you through a process, everything from how to stamp the letter and send it in to how to make tough choices about um, what client options are open. So we're taking this very visual, interactive, and lively um, approach to uh, how we get information across. No more PDFs, no more static information. Everything should be alive and playable on your mobile phone.